Hey people, what's up? I'm on my way to Costco right now. My uh, Bridgestone Potenza RE71Rs are in the shop, so I'm gonna get those on. We're gonna get an alignment. The reason I'm going with Bridgestone RE71Rs is because um, those are the one of the only options I have for performance tires for this size. I know I can get some Kumos, but a lot of other uh, tires uh, that are really high performance don't make it for my rim size and my tire size. 205 50R15s are what fit really well on my tire, my rims, my 15 by 7 really 15 by 6.5 rims. So um, my options are limited, but I know these aren't my only ones, but Costco carries these and they have really good deals, as we already know. So uh, that's kind of the reasoning behind my choice. So I almost didn't get to put my tires on because they are four and a half percent undersized because of the sidewall being so much smaller even though the rims are bigger than the stock ones so I almost I had to argue with them to make my case that this is a uh, extreme summer performance tires and uh, they gave me the exception but uh, thank you Costco you're the best poor guy <laughs> I don't think anybody let him know that there's no power steering aha yes RE71Rs, baby. So nice. So I just wanted to show you guys what's up with the exhaust. Just because I deleted the old video, I wanted to put in that other video. See the problem I have? Look at how low that sits. It's absurd. It can go up quite a bit. You can see the gap between that part of the oil pan. There's the kicked out some, but that's closer to me. But just look how low this sits. Look at how the guy had to <laughs> weld that piece to make it fit with the cat's height. Oh my gosh, so that's what I have to have redone as soon as I can. So I'm on my way to my alignment right now um, after getting the tires on. I gotta already tell you, it's a night and day, okay? There's no pull to the left or right. There's no issues that I thought I had. There's no shaking like I would be right now at 75, 80 miles an hour. Those tires were so bad. I can't believe how bad they were. All those issues I had were gone. I almost would think my alignment was perfect, but I'm still gonna go get one. Learn from me, those tires were so bad. Do not leave tires on that long. I'm gonna go get my alignment, and then we're doing some remote tuning, which I'm super excited about. John Vega, Fearable.net, hooking me up with a great remote tune. It's gonna be a lot of fun, giving the uh, user a lot of control over what happens. Um, We'll get a horsepower number. I don't really care about that right now. Just want to get the car running right. All right, so we're gonna start the E-tune. I have adjusted the fuel pressure to be 40 PSI. Um, then I have to uh, calibrate the O2 and the TPS sensors, and I need to set base ignition timing to about 15 degrees on here. All right, for the remote tune, I need to do four data logs. Now I got all my sensors synced to the uh, S300. I need to do a data log at idle at operating temp. Almost there, just a little bit more. Um, and then uh, I need to do a uh, stoplight to stoplight type data log or a couple minutes and I need to do a 45 to 50 miles an hour in fifth gear data log and then uh, I need to do my 3000 rpms to redline third gear pull so that'll be fun <laughs> and uh, yeah let's that's gonna do that a couple times uh, fearable.net they're gonna use those four data logs to calibrate a couple times and I think this is kind of cool I get really involved in the process um, yes that number should be a lot higher it's just needs to be calibrated, it's too rich right now. Okay, I'm gonna do the third gear pull. About that turn. Okay, here we go.
uh, it's really cool. I really enjoy doing this. I heavily enjoy being this involved and learning the software so much. All right, so here's how this goes. You send them your uh, data logs that they asked for, and then they give you a new calibration based on the feedback they're getting from them. And you go ahead and you upload it to the ECU, like that. And then you do all the data logs again. All right, so going through the second day of e-tuning, I'm on round three. Um, I think I have one more session, I'm not sure. Uh, but I'm gonna give data logs for this set, so. Uh, some things to note, last night, uh, after I did my two data logs for idle and 45 to 50 mile an hour driving, I pulled into my parking spot and uh, Kula was like spewing out of something near the thermostat. So I think it was the lower radiator hose attached it to the thermostat, which seemed a little loose. Another thing I have to show or share with you is that um, I believe my crank seal uh, is pushing out oil. It's kind of failing when I'm near the red line. That's, uh, I only say it because I've never noticed it before, but there's those two dreaded oil drops at the bottom of the timing cover behind the harmonic balancer, and the oil pan itself at that section, which has the little bend in it, where you put a Honda Bond, that's dry still. It doesn't have any oil on it, so not super happy about that because I replaced the crank seal. I hope I didn't push it in too far, but um, anyway, I'll, I'll check that when I get back home. All right, so I checked. There's no leakage from over here this side of things. I checked underneath. There's no oil drips at the bottom of the timing cover, so I think my theory is correct so far that it's leaking, kind of pushing out oil when I'm near the red line, which is crazy. Right now it's set at 7,800 RPMs. That's higher than I ever want to do anywhere but first gear at the racetrack. Maybe not even that, so that's all good signs. So let's get back to it. Okay, here's our chance. Cross traffic's got a red light now. back home now. I'm gonna check a couple things. There was some sludge in there before and I cleaned it and I don't see it again. Wasn't able to clean all of it. You could see it down there but uh, that's good news. So it's not pouring out up there. So I'm gonna check down here. It's candid. I haven't done this yet. Oh wow. No drips. Wow that's really good. Uh, I'm really happy that I don't see anything like that um, over there like I did before. No coolant leaks either. Uh, this is good news, so I'm really happy. All right, I just got the uh, fourth tune in the ECU, and uh, we're gonna. This could potentially be the last one before the tuner feels really comfortable with uh, what he's getting on the data logs. So. Um, it's good news. I mean, the uh, cars at operating temp and the uh, AFRs right now are near 14.0, which is great. Um, so the car's doing really well. It's obviously rattling like crazy because I don't have any balance shafts at idle, but I don't really care about that, obviously. So let's do our final round. I'm going to do my third gear pull right now. Man, that VTEC kicks in hard, and it's feeling good up there at the top end. Woo! 
I would never take it up to the red line. I'm going to set the uh, chicken delight to come on as my shift flight of like 7,500, but whoa! I love it! So I try, let, let's say, let's do a little pull from a dig. Let's just, I'm just curious because I haven't done this in first gear yet. Alright, so road tuning is a ton of fun. Uh, I definitely recommend it if uh, you can. You learn a lot about the software, you learn a lot about how to tune. Almost done with the process, I just put in a new map that John Vega sent me. So we'll see how that calibration goes. I got a race coming up in the next video and getting ready for that. I did just change the oil and I am a little concerned. I see the little ribbons of microscopic metal fragments in the filter. So um, the oil is a little bit on the black side like I'm used to from the other car and this motor is supposed to have way less miles, around 50,000. So a little concerned about that. Uh, hopefully due to new pan, due to the filter, I'm not entirely sure. Um, we'll have to see uh, at the next oil change how it looks. But uh, about to go to an event uh, very soon here. So you see that video coming up soon. All right, this is Falconator signing out.